Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Trumpet Daily. The former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton, recently said, the world is descending into chaos. This is the statement my father focused on during the latest Key of David program, which played over the weekend. Here on the Trumpet Daily, we've been following these many chaotic crises that we see in the world today. There have been shocking reports of mass executions and beheadings in Iraq and Syria. There's the Ebola outbreak in Western Africa that's now so bad that parts of major cities have been quarantined. There's the escalating tension between Russia and Ukraine. There's the racial division right here in America that has some of our inner cities on edge. Take note of that Key of David title once more. The world is descending into chaos. The whole world is descending into chaos. It's spreading. It's getting worse and worse, and you need to know why. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. And he said unto me, you must prophesy again. In that Key of David program that played over the weekend, my father quoted telegraphed columnist Ambrose uh, Evans Pritchard, who wrote on July 25th, he said, in the 30 years or so that I've been writing about world affairs and the international economy, I have never seen, never, never seen a more dangerous confluence of circumstances or more remarkable complacency. The world is descending into chaos, but people don't seem to care much about it. Most people haven't really noticed just how bad it is. Even many of our leaders, we had a Trumpet Daily program recently titled Fiddling While Rome Burns, and in that episode we took a look at what many Western leaders are doing or not doing, even as the world around them is collapsing. As shocking as, as these events ought to be, there's too many people in the world today that don't seem to care much about what's happening. Let's begin over in Isaiah uh, 30 today in verse 8. Why isn't there more outrage today at what's happening in Syria, in Iraq, in Ukraine, in Gaza, in the United States, in Britain, all over the world? Well, the Bible actually has something to say about that, as we'll see. Isaiah in chapter 30, and we'll start in verse 8. It says, Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book, uh, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. God told Isaiah to go and write this down, as he said to so many of his prophets, write it down so that it can be preserved for a time to come, for the latter days. It wasn't primarily for their day. Now, there is duality in prophecy. There was an ancient fulfillment in type. But as you can know and understand for yourself, if you study our booklets, so many of these prophecies that these prophets wrote about, they weren't even fulfilled in their day. But we see them happening today, right before our eyes. Look at verse 9. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers or to the teachers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. That's what the people want. Now, anciently in Israel, I mean, there was, I mean, that, that state of, of thinking was certainly there and prevalent at that time as it is today. But look at what you see today the general populace that just doesn't want to really receive the truth. They want smooth things or deceits, as it says there. Now you compare or add this prophecy together with some in the New Testament. Uh, 2 Peter 2 and chapter 3, both of those chapters talk about false prophets coming in the latter days. And chapter 3 talks about scoffers in the last days that when they would hear the truth or the warnings from God, they'd just scoff at those prophecies and say, well, the world's been this way all the time. Nothing new here. No difference today from a generation ago or from centuries ago. And they carry on. Too many leaders in the West today are just saying what people want to, to hear. We referred to 
the verse in Jeremiah uh, previously, the, the ambassadors coming saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Talking about peace. The analogy has been made about uh, Secretary of State John Kerry, like before World War II, traveling the world, meeting with these, these dictators, these tyrants, wherever they want to meet, trying to arrange some kind of peace, some kind of negotiation that can sustain things for a little bit longer. And yet we see, see all of these crises mounting. No matter what the leaders say about tranquility or about the United States position being stronger than ever, you're hearing about many of the hot spots. We've brought your uh, attention to them here on this program. Like I mentioned earlier, with Ukraine and, and Gaza, Syria and, and Iraq, ISIS, and the situation in, in Ferguson here in the States, the southern border. But what about all the areas that typically don't get the headlines? Areas like in, in Western Africa, there's a feature today in the New York Times about the spread of Ebola and how many people that are there to try to help the problem, how they're now dying off. Sections of cities are being quarantined. Political division is certainly rife in so many nations, Indonesia. Uh, you look at the protests in Pakistan. You look at the struggle in, in South Sudan, the violence, the division the political strife and so on. I mean, you know, if you have any interest in the trumpet.com or you've watched this program of the Key of David, you know, you know the world <laughs> as it is today. And it's not like we're here trying to just focus in on all the negatives. But at the same time, I mean, we have to tell you what the world is like today and, and ask you and challenge you, why is it that way? And how is it going to change? How are the problems going to be solved? I mean, we do have a, a positive and hopeful message. But every day we're just, being, <laughs> we're just being besieged with evidence from every direction that certainly man, man himself is incapable, utterly incapable of solving the problems of this world. You should be able to see that. I mean, look at what Pritchard talked about in his column, the complacency that's setting in. He's never seen anything like it. Scary times indeed. A couple more verses I can just point you to. Isaiah 59, 8. The way of peace they know not. Man just doesn't know. Look, it's not that peace isn't coming. It's not that there's no hope for this, this dying world. There is. It's just that peace is coming at the hand of God and his intervention. Not at the hands of men. Not at the hands of diplomats. Not at the hands of world leaders. God has to do it. Man, I mean, he's been looking for, for peace from every direction and recycling old ideas right and left. And yet we see the same problems persist. They're spreading, in fact. They're worsening. Let's go over to uh, 2 Timothy here in conclusion. Go back, if you haven't viewed that Key of David program just yet that played over the weekend, go back and, and view that. Watch that program. It's a lone voice in the midst of this very dark and, and dying world that helps us to understand and to see the times that we're living in. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 1, this is the Apostle Paul writing in the first century to his top aide, his assistant, the evangelist Timothy. And it says in verse 1, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He says to Timothy, verse 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He says to his assistant, even as Paul's about to die, he's about to be killed for preaching the truth. And he tells his assistant, now you go out there and preach the word. Preach God's truth. John 17 and verse 17. Thy word is truth. You preach that in season, out of season. Keep at it. Don't let down. Don't cave in to pressure. Don't be a people pleaser. Don't put together a message that the people receive gladly because it's, it's smooth and easy. It tells them everything's going to be okay. It sugarcoats all the problems of the world. Preach the truth. And if it rebukes them, if it reproves them, so be it. 
That's what they need. That's what this world needs. Verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. See, they're just going to reject the truth of God and go out for something that's pleasant, that kind of tickles the ears. That's what the meaning is there. Just a pleasant message, easy going, smooth sailing, sweet sounding words, but not based in reality. God's word is based in reality. God's word is truth, and that's what we need to preach in season, out of season, whenever. That's what God has called, his, called upon his work to do. And as you see from some of these verses, I mean, what we see in the world today is not just the only thing that's prophesied, the general reaction that people have to it, the complacency that's setting in, that too is prophesied. Isaiah talked about it. Paul talked about it. Jeremiah talked about it. Jesus talked about it. Verse 4, it says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and uh, shall be turned unto fables. They're going to turn away from what the Bible says to receive smooth things. Do you feel like that's happening today? It is happening. It's happening all over the world, which is why Jesus told us in Luke 21 that we better be watchful. We better not go along with the crowd. We better sit up and take note and look at the world that we're living in today. Look at this world, this Key of David program. Uh, the world is descending into chaos. That's the one that played over the weekend. Go back, as I said, and see that. Watch that program. And then order this, this wonderful little booklet here, The Wonderful World Tomorrow, What It Will Be Like. You'll see that if you study very much of our literature, that while so many of our publications like the Trumpet Weekly, this is just the most recent issue that came out on Friday, that while these issues certainly do keep us abreast of what's happening in the world today, we do have answers. There is hope, and that hope is in God. So make sure that you, as you go about your week this week, we're right here at the start of it, don't be complacent, don't be lazy, don't put off today what you should do today. Don't put it off for a time in the future. But you get busy and do what Jesus said, what we need to be doing at this time. Watching and praying always. Drawing closer to God. Filling up on the Word of God, God's truth, God's teaching. As it comes through His servants. Fill up on that truth so that you can know why the world is the way that it is today. And so that you can know how it's going to be solved, the many problems of this world. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time on The Trumpet Daily.